in my rather messy home office I have two desks set up. The desk on the left is the one I sit at most days for my day job, so that's just got my normal PC on it. Um, the desk on the right usually has an older machine on, and I use this mostly for gaming at the end of the week, or just to chill out in an evening. At the moment it's got the Amiga 500 set up, however I want to replace this now with my Amiga 1200. So this has been my Amiga setup for some time now. It's the trusty old 500, um, but it's been uh, accelerated using the individual computers ACI 500 Plus. This is a really great little accelerator, it makes the 500 very capable. Namely, it adds two compact flash slots, um, one for boot and one for um, transferring between a PC. And on the flip side of this card, you can't actually see it this way up, there is also a, um, a faster M68K processor. So in other words, it makes the, um, the 500 much faster in terms of compute power too. Before this 500, my Amiga setup was the trusty Amiga 600, which is basically a 500 scaled down. It came later in the, um, in the line of Amigas, but it didn't really do much more than the 500 did, to be honest. It does come in a very kind of nice case. I think this is one of the best looking Amigas, but unfortunately it's not overly expandable. Um, it's really just a 500. So, yeah. And just occasionally I do actually crack out the CD32 as well, although um, I think the 1200 will be much more fun than the, um, the CD32. So this was Amiga's attempt at building a CD console, because that was the thing at the time. Um, funny looking thing, isn't it? Yeah, maybe I should make videos about these systems one day, I don't know. But anyway, today what I want to do is replace the 500 with a 1200. And here is my 1200. This was gifted to me by my partner, which was very nice of her. Um, now the reason I want to use this instead of the 500 is because it has that AGA graphics chipset, which means you can play some of the later Amiga games and they look pretty good compared to the OCS and ECS games. The problem I was having though was um, the stock Amiga 1200 doesn't come with a great deal of memory, which means that you can't load hard disk, um, you can't load games from hard disk without a RAM expansion. So I was able to load games from hard disk on the 500 because um, this accelerator board actually um, adds a ton of RAM to the 500, which meant it was sufficient. The stock 1200, on the other hand, doesn't have enough memory to load lots of games off of the um, off the hard disk, and I'll show you that before I do the upgrade. I'll show you the problems I was having. Okay, so let's um, let's get onto that. Let's do that first. So I've got the A1200 set up now. Um, I'm just pointing the camera at the screen, so you'll, I apologize for that. I don't have the ability to do screen capture. So anyway, what I want to show you is some of the problems I'm having with um, running games off the hard disk using a program called WHD Load. Now in short, what WHD Load lets you do is copy um, games onto a compact flash card or onto a hard disk, and then load them directly from the workbench screen instead of having to insert floppy disks and swap floppy disks. Uh, especially for the AGA games, they would have come on, you know, tons of floppy disks and you'd be constantly swapping them all the time. And that's just completely annoying. But what WHD Load allows you to do is just double click on the, um, on the game and then you don't have to swap any disks or anything. So the first problem is some games just simply don't load. So for example, Alien Breed 2, the AGA version, if I try and launch this with WHD Load, then we get this error here, can't allocate shadow mem. And what that basically means is you don't have enough memory to even start the game. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is slightly different. So some games do load. For example, Turrican 2 does load. The problem is, is that when the game is um, playing, there will be certain points where the screen flickers as WHD load presumably loads more of the game into memory. So um, I think what's happening there is um, WHD Load will try and load as much of the game into memory as it can and if it hasn't got enough memory then what it tends to do is, you see this flickering here? This is what I'm talking about. So what I think that is, is I think it's WHD Load paging different parts of the game into memory uh, on demand because it doesn't have enough memory in the first place to load the whole lot in. So I really doubt that these old Amigas had anything like DMA so it can't even do the IO in parallel, it has to do it um, using the CPU basically, um, and yeah, that's why we see the slowdown. And I think there's another slowdown if we start the game. Right, so there it is again. Uh, okay, and I think it works fine past this point. Uh, there's another flicker.
The plan is to use a, um, an upgrade to give the system more RAM. And what I've gone for is an accelerator board from, again, from um, individual computers, the same people who did the A500 accelerator I showed you earlier. And this one is called, there it is, ACA1221EC. Um, you can get much um, fancier accelerators than this, however, this is going to be just fine for what I need it for. Let's have a quick look. Okay. So there it is, and um, what have we got? We've got the CPU here, and this is a, I think it's actually a faster CPU than the stock one. So that's an O20 CPU. I uh, can't remember what the Amiga 1200 has in uh, stock, but we'll find out in a minute. Um, what have we got there? A couple of FPGAs, some memory. It also came with some instructions, so we'll have a read of that in a moment. And I also got the uh, floppy disk with the software to configure the accelerator. You can actually download this for free, but I was just being lazy, so I bought the um, I bought the floppy disk. It was only a, another pound or two, so fine. Now, before we go ahead and install the uh, accelerator, I'm just going to look at the hardware configuration before, and we'll compare it to what it is afterwards. So we're going to use this tool called Sysinfo. Um, if you're an Amiga user, I'm sure you're uh, already familiar with this. It's very useful. Uh, it tells you what hardware you have, and you can also do very basic benchmarking just to see how quick your CPU is. All right, so um, first of all, what hardware do we actually have in here? So according to Sysinfo, we have a, uh, where is it here? The CPU is a, um, it's an O20 chip. And I think if we do the benchmarking, it will tell us roughly how fast it thinks it is. Uh, yeah, so it thinks it's about 15.2 megahertz. That's probably actually a 16 megahertz CPU because they wouldn't have uh, come out of the factory with that rating 15.2. Um, what else is interesting here? Um, so when I pressed speed earlier though, all we did was we ran the dry stone benchmark, which is a fairly standard benchmark. Okay, it's not exactly a, um, a a comprehensive suite of benchmarks we've run there, but it's good enough just to get a rough idea of what's going on. And then it tells you um, how fast you are compared to other um, other systems, other CPUs. So if we zoom in on this, this is us here, the red bar. And um, then we've got various other systems here. And this um, box here is showing the speed, the speed up compared to those systems. So in other words, if we saw a one here, then we would be um, as fast as the system. If we saw a number higher, then we are faster. If we saw a number lower, then they are faster. So for example, we're very close to an, a, uh, an A1200 um, running an ECO20 CPU. That's um, because, well, that's exactly what this is. Um, we're faster than an A600 and a uh, B2000. B2000? Okay, not familiar with that. But then, um, for example, an A2500, an A3000, and an A4000 are much quicker than us. And the A4000 is really fast. So um, we run at 0 0.07 times the speed of this um, reference A4000. The other thing I'm interested in is the uh, current memory that we have. So if we click memory here, we get one screen for each, um, each uh, memory module which has been detected. And it gives you the base address and... Um, the end address, etc. We're not really interested in that, to be honest. All I'm interested in knowing is how much we have. So we've got two meg of chip RAM, uh, and that's it. Um, yeah, so we should, when we plug in the accelerator, we should see uh, more memory, and we should also see a faster CPU. So I'd expect this bar to be, I'm not entirely sure. I think the, the CPU on the accelerator is rated at 25 megahertz. So maybe it will be as fast as the A3000 or the A, uh, well, not the A4000, but as fast as the A3000. Um, and of course, you can overclock the um, the CPU on the accelerator, and that brings it up to higher clock speeds than 25 megahertz. So I think what we'll do now is we'll plug in the board, and then we'll rerun sysinfo and see what difference we've made. So there's the Amiga all unplugged, and all I'm going to do now is flip it over. And I believe... The accelerator is going into the trapdoor here, so you just open that using a flathead screwdriver, like so. And it's going in there. And that's what it looks like once it's fitted. Sorry, I had to do it off camera because it was actually quite fiddly. So on first boot we get just a black screen, and the manual is actually quite clear that 
Um, this can happen. It can be that the ball isn't actually uh, making good contact with the edge connector. So what I'm going to do off camera now is just uh, wiggle the board around a bit, see if I can get something to come out of the video. All right, there we go. So all I did there was to move the uh, the accelerator board back a, about a millimeter or two from the edge connector, and it boots up just fine. So, did we improve anything? Let's find out. Okay, so what does this info now tell us? Um, tells us we still have an O20 CPU. That's kind of what we expect. Let's hit the speed button and see if we've actually got a faster CPU at this point. Okay, so it estimates that it's now 18.4 megahertz. That's a strange number for a CPU rating. But anyway, um, let's expand this. Uh, it looks like we're now faster than the stock um, reference A1200 by about, I don't know, two and a half times by the look of it. And what about memory? So we've now got eight meg of fast RAM there, and then a meg of slow RAM. I think this is for the map ROM thing, the map ROM um, feature of the accelerator. And what's this? Two meg of chip RAM. I think that's the chip RAM we had before. Okay, so that's just with the accelerator in its default settings. If we use the floppy disk that came with it, then we can actually tweak some of the settings. So let's do that now. Right, what have we got on here? This is the first time I'm seeing this, so I don't really know what to expect. Don't tell me this is a blank disk. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we've got some, what have we got here? We've got an, an LHA archive, something called ACA1221 EC flash, and something called ACA name. Okay, rather than blindly run these things, I think I'm gonna read the manual and figure out what we're supposed to be doing here. So bear with me. All right, so I figured out what's going on here. The floppy disk which Amiga Kit supplied did not contain the software for configuring the card. So they had only included the flash tool and the tool for getting the name of the card. You actually need another um, suite of software which is on the individual computer's website. And that's easily installed by just double clicking the install script once you've uh, un lha the archive. Kind of annoying that um, that Amiga Kit didn't provide everything that was needed to get going with this because uh, I paid extra to have the convenience of the software on the floppy disk, but it wasn't on there. So, hmm, never mind anyway. So let's see if we can get the configuration tool up and running now. The way you change the clock speed of the CPU is via this tool called ACA Clock. And what you do is, um, once you've installed everything, of course, you run ACA Clock, then S equals and a number and um, the numbers um, set various different clock speeds and they're all in the documentation so I recommend that you take a quick read of the documentation before you start experimenting with this stuff. The uh, Amiga Kit webpage from which I bought the accelerator says that if you want to uh, clock above 28.38 then you should have active cooling. Now I don't have active cooling so I'm going to stick with um, speed step 2 which is 28.38. And there are a few other tools that come with the accelerator which I'm not going to experiment with on camera. But um, we've got, so you know about ACA clock, ACA control, I'm not sure what this is because I don't have the software to open that particular um, documentation. Um, ACA gov is about um, power saving settings, so um, it's a bit like speed step on the AMD64 machines of today. So it will clock down the CPU if it's not utilised to save power. An ACA map ROM is to do with copying the uh, kickstart ROM into fast memory to make um, various ROM routines faster. So I'll play with these at my own leisure. I'm not going to do it on the camera. What I'm really interested in now is what Sysinfo thinks of the CPU now that we've clocked it up. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so it reckons it's 31.6. That's nice. Um, and this brings us in line with, well, faster than an A3000 according to that particular benchmark. So that's pretty good going. So I reckon now that we should be able to play 
some of those uh, AGA games that I was talking about that wouldn't load. So let's see what we've got. Uh, Alien Breed 2 was the one that didn't load. It was the AGA version, wasn't it? Let's see what happens with this. Okay, so we don't get the Shadow ROM warning. Shadow Mem, not Shadow ROM. Okay, and it appears to be working. Nice. So let's see. The horror continues. Yeah, so all the loading times seem to be pretty nice and fast. Okay, I'm not actually going to play this for long, but um, let's have a quick go. Ah, oh, these games are so hard. I, ugh. I've got a friend who really enjoys alien um, alien breed games, but they're just so brutally difficult. Um, well, as with most games at the time. Uh, I'm just not good at these games. Anyway, um, the other game that we should try, of course, is um, Turrican. Why does F10 not work? I didn't look at the, what, the, um, what the key was to get out of the game. I'm just going to reboot then. Ever since installing the ACA software, the workbench gives this on first boot. So I'm going to have to look into what this is all about. It's kind of annoying, uh, although you can just press retry and it works. Anyway, um, what we were going to look at was um, whether or not Turrican does the flickering thing with WHD load. So let's just find it. Uh huh. Come on then. Now as I recall it was here where we were having the problem. Okay, so straight in, no problems. And there was also another one on the loading screen, let's just go to that. Okay, straight into the game without any flickering, so that's great. Um, so we've solved the problem basically. There's a lot of stuff that I can be fiddling around with in the um, in the uh, where well, I can do the power saving thing, for example, and find out what the other tools are. But this is already looking pretty good. So yeah, we'll consider that a victory, and um, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.